this is Ethan Purston from the Sunshine State of Florida, reporting for Kids First. Today we have amazing directors from the movie and documentary Cowboys, an extraordinary film about the lifestyle and daily labor of a cowboy in the 21st century. We have Bud Force and Jog Legmore. Thank you so much for the both of you for taking the time today. How are you guys? Right. Doing pretty good, Pleasure. Ethan. Thanks for having so, us. So, uh, Bud, do you want to take the first question? Sure thing. Go ahead. Fire away. <laughs> so how long uh, did you know John and what motivated you both to make this documentary? Well, I knew John, honestly, about six months before we started making this film together. I'd moved uh, nearby and took out an office next to him and we hit it off and became acquaintances and had both had a, a background in the cowboy world and basically had never seen an authentic documentary about working ranch cowboys and, and decided we would take a stab and try to change that. That sounds really interesting because it's kind of like in the movie how the cowboys have known each other for so long. It, it's like kind of like you've been cowboys like with him for so long, but it's only like six months, but it's so cool how you guys make it look like it's been so much longer. So, John, are you both cowboys? If yes, how long? Yeah, um, I actually started, how old are you, Ethan? I'm 12. Okay, so I started cowboying when I was 12 years old. I went to my first ranch in Montana and I cowboyed for 12 summers. Um, and uh, then I went off to school and became a professional and did a completely different life until I finally became a photographer and sent me back to the cowboy world and uh, Bud can speak to his own cowboy life. So yeah, Bud, I grew up. How'd you become a cowboy? Well, I, uh, I moved to Texas whenever I was 13 years old and my parents had horses and cattle and I started working for ranches and cut what they call cutting horse outfits around the area. And then I joined the rodeo. I rodeoed for four years. I rode bulls and uh and did that until i had a really bad wreck with the bull and went back to school and became a, a filmmaker after my rodeo career was over that's really cool to be riding a bull like towards my age and i've i haven't even rode an animal at all like a horse or anything so uh bud in this movie you want the audience to learn about being a cowboy is more than just riding horses being a cowboy comes with a lot of sacrifices so can you tell us like the day in a life of a cowboy Yes, sir. Yeah, there's a lot of great things to that lifestyle, but as you mentioned, you do have to make a lot of sacrifices to live in that way. It's, it's a bit of a juxtaposition. You get to live out in the country, watch the sunrise every day, but at the same time, it's a really remote lifestyle that doesn't um, fit with everyone. And so living remotely, having to wake up, not just on a pretty day, but in the cold of the winter and the heat of the summer and take care of animals, horses and cattle, all that is, uh, it really lends itself to a tough way of life. Yeah, it's like almost like a big choice kind of, are you going to choose to live this life or this life? So, well, uh, exactly. John, you're right. <laughs> John, what do you think is the best reward of being a cowboy? Well, I... For me, I would say there are a few things that I think were very rewarding about being a cowboy. One is definitely horses. You know, if you don't love horses, you should not become a cowboy because you spend more time with your horse than with your wife or, uh, you know, likely even your kids or anyone else. So horses is a great aspect of being a cowboy. Working all day, every day outdoors is another really great aspect of being a cowboy um, you know so it's another thing that if if you love the outdoors it's one of the last ways of life where you can really spend your whole working day outside and the last thing I'd say is it's a great group of people it's a really tight-knit um, culture and there's a real camaraderie among working cowboys and and it's a really rewarding aspect of, of joining that group so it's kind of like a family? Unequivocally, it's, they call themselves a family all the time. So very, very perceptive, yes. That's really nice. So, um, but in this movie, the Cowboys family lived in small wood houses. And I didn't see any uh, electronics like TVs or video games like we have nowadays. Uh, like nowadays. 
And is it because the ranches are isolated and there's no Wi-Fi, or do cowboys just choose to live in another type of world? Well, it really depends on where you are. So some of these really remote houses that you saw in the film, they might only have a generator. They might not have cell phone service or Wi-Fi. But other ranches, depending on where the families are located, they might. So whether the kids play video games or have access to Wi-Fi and the grown-ups too, uh, is just dependent on, on where they were. But generally, as far as the cowboy world goes, you're going to be working most of the day, like John had said. And so there's not quite as much time for video games or something like that, like you might have if you lived in the city. So, John, um, I observed that children start young to learn how to become a cowboy. And at a small age, they already have a pocket knife, and my mom doesn't trust me with the knife. So okay. do they go to school or are they homeschooled? Well, they do a bit of both, um, you know, and it depends on the ranch. So the ranches that Bud and I put into the film are like really big ranches. You know, some of them are over a million acres, um, you know, the size of like a, a small state. So when you live someplace that's that, that much, that remote, um, school in town can be a long ways away. So a lot of kids are homeschooled and then a lot of them work out of, they go to school in a one room schoolhouse that's nearby. And some ranches are a little closer to town and the, a bus comes by and picks them up and they go to school with other kids. And all of them are small towns though, that's for sure. You know, even the ones that go to school in town it's always a small town, but some are homeschooled and some even still go to school in a one room schoolhouse. That sounds really interesting because uh, I saw one of the kids, he was talking about how he got his first knife at like six, but um, I can't even touch any knives except for like plastic ones because I can't even trust myself. Well, you're not alone. <laughs> uh, we laughed at the fact that he got that knife so young and we knew there'd be a lot of kids out there thinking, ah, I he said, knife. he said my first knife. So I was like, mm -hmm. so, uh, but I didn't know how important cowboys are in our country. And I didn't know how it's like a profession like any other. So this movie really inspired me and taught me their hard work and sacrifices. So what is the message you would like to send to young audiences, like little kids, or who kids like who like to dress like cowboys or want to be cowboys? Well, I think it's important that people know where their food comes from. And it doesn't come directly from the grocery store. If you walk into your grocery store, into the meat aisle, and you see all these beautiful packaged up uh, cellophane wrapped steaks or, or what have you, someone was out there working with that livestock, growing that cattle, and, and trying to get it to that point to feed not only America, but the world with beef. So I, I think that's the number one thing. But also, cowboying is real. Uh, there's a lot of kind of, you know, fake movie cowboys and all of that, but it's a real thing. And it's real people who are still out there producing the world's beef. And as long as we continue to eat beef, there will always be cowboys. So it's not yeah. like how they have in the movies where it's like those Western draws <laughs> with like the hay bales going hey, Ethan, <laughs> not I all the time add, I, I might add to that that uh, anybody can go be a cowboy all you got to do is express a willingness to do it and you know so any kid can go get a job on a ranch you may start at the bottom but they'll always put you to work and um, you know if you cowboy even for a short period of time you'll never be the same afterwards that's really like hard to take in because they take so many sacrifices and I know some people would waste food and now I know where it comes from. So it's kind of like, you know, hard to understand. You bet. So John, if you weren't a cowboy, what job do you think you would be doing right now besides being directors? Uh, well, you know, I spend the, most of my days um, as, as an attorney and I'm a photographer as well. So, you know, my cowboy, like I still go visit ranches and I ride with the cowboys and, but I'm not a working cowboy anymore. I haven't been for, I haven't been on the payroll of a ranch for a long time. So, you know, I, I would do what it takes to feed my family and, um, you know, and, and just the fact that I can keep going back to the ranches is one of the great things of having made this film. That's really nice. So, um, Bud, last question. Um, what would, would you guys be doing more films in the future? 
Well, filmmaking is a big part of what I do personally. So we're making films all the time. In fact, we have one premiering uh, tomorrow or the day after tomorrow at the World Championship Ranch Rodeo, where a lot of these cowboys in the movie will be there. Uh, so we'll continue to make films. We'll continue to make films about cowboys and agriculture and beef production and adventure and all that good stuff. So yeah, I'd say we're just going to keep on keeping on. So thank you both for taking the time to speak with me, Mr. Bud Force and Mr. John Legmore from the movie uh, or documentary Cowboys. It was a pleasure having you both today. Thank you, partner. Appreciate yeah, it, Ethan. Thanks for having us on, Ethan. Good job, and I like that hat, man. <laughs> thank you. All right. So Cowboys is available worldwide on November 17th on Amazon, iTunes, Google Play, and Video On Demand. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss our next interviews or film reviews. This is Ethan Purston from Florida reporting for Kids First, signing off. Yeah! <laughs> but that same old time spirit is still in them. And it always will be. I think you have to like to suffer if you want to really be a good cowboy. <laughs>